we are going to start this video off with firing up the S14. I feel like this thing only gets to run once a month, but I at least need to start it up because this poor thing just sits outside. And also another thing to note real quick is, I don't know if it's just this time of year, but the bugs, cicadas, everything, listen to that. They just go all day. It seems like it started about a week ago. These things have been non-stop out here, but I feel like the 240 here, poor thing, just sits outside along with the sidekick over there. We're already out of room in the shop and uh, this one definitely gets neglected out of the bunch. And I come out here, fire it up every now and then just to make sure you know, it doesn't fill up with water from rain and everything. I really need to put a cover back over the engine here. But oh, this poor car, man, let me fire her up real quick. Oh, she is weak. Jump box is dead. All right, had to hook the truck up. Normally I wouldn't put this much effort into trying to start this thing, but it has been sitting for a minute. So I'll make sure she's cleared out. Come on. He does not want to run. Well, that's odd. I even turned them all on to be positive. I'm gonna give her a... That's water pump. Fans. And that was so uh, air fuel. Oh, okay. What's this one? I don't think that one did anything. Did no. It? I don't know. I'll leave that extra one on just in case. Oh, maybe it did need that one. I guess it needs this switch to run. Let me see. Turn that one off. Yeah. Turn that one off. Oh, it that's needs it. the last switch. That's why. Huh. There we go. Give you guys a quick update on the old route to see here we have this thing completely stripped apart <laughs> forgot where we left off in the last video but i know we got the engine out and stuff but got uh everything that we don't need out of the engine bay we still got to get this thing pushed out power wash it out and why has been working on the wiring just like how when we tore the mr2 apart went through all the stock wiring and got rid of absolutely every wire we didn't need yep he has laid everything out over here very nicely yeah it's getting there so just this extra wiring here is from the chassis so this is the completely new chassis harness uh this just this small amount already has everything we need um fans boost controller lighting everything's in just this harness and that takes care of the entire chassis so that's done out of the way got some new parts for the engine harness as well so we're going to be doing a nice bulkhead right on the firewall 
for the engine harness. Yeah, that'll be fancy. Yeah, so that way you so, can just unhook that. You can drop the whole motor with the harness on it. You don't have to worry about unhooking anything. So yeah, that'll be really nice. Let me pop the go. hood and explain how that works real quick. So basically all this will be is right here somewhere on the firewall, wherever we're gonna put it, and the wiring harness will just unplug directly from the firewall. You don't have to run it. Uh, out from the cabinet going to the computer it yeah. just unplugs yeah. and you can drop the motor right out right do whatever so, you need to do yeah the whole engine harness will go right to that and then simple as that whole engine harness disconnects really simple so hd20 Deutsch connector for anybody that cares i uh, got a bunch of other stuff in here just miscellaneous things yeah, that we're going to be using box and... yep this will be the new fuse box for the entire chassis so this will take care of fans lights all that stuff kind of got it all Labeled there. in there. Yep. So real simple stuff, but it'll make the car, you know, way cleaner and, you know, easier to track down any kind of wiring issues we may have in the future. Yeah, this is going to look much better than the rat's nest that was in there. So we'll still have working headlights, taillights, yep. all that good stuff. And you can see this big pile of wiring that we're not going to need yeah. over there. And pretty and much all of that is gone. Like we're not going to use any of that. Yeah, that's probably so. a good amount of weight of yeah. wires so look at all that it's just coming out of there that we don't need and then we have the steering steering column pulled out of this thing and that is a hefty unit that's a big boy and man. we're going to be putting another motion raceworks column once that comes in and we're just trying to lighten everything up why well, i also got this nice switch panel made up right here so we're yeah. gonna have everything on the switches you know start oh it's not attached <laughs> yet <laughs> not attached quite yet i pushed her down yep but I was pretty proud of this. I bought a finger brake and this is the first project I did on it. Super simple, but really nice to be able to do nice brakes. So that'll be all the switches. You got your ignition and the ECU is gonna take care of like everything in this car, but we will have two auxiliary switches for whatever if we need them. Headlights, turn signals, and a horn. Oh yeah. So real simple. She'll have it all. She'll have everything you need. Yeah, get some weight out of this thing, get the wiring cleaned up go through her, get her dialed. What I'd really love to do on the van is see if someone can make us some carbon, carbon doors, doors or even fiberglass, but. And a trunk. You know. You'd lose like 300 pounds off this Bro, piece. if we could do all carbon doors and the rear hatch, dude, this thing sweet. would get so light and it would be, dude, it would be a weapon. It wouldn't just be your average minivan. It would be a yeah. force to be reckoned with if we could get another couple hundred pounds out of this indoors. But, you know, people don't exactly make <laughs> race parts. 95. Honda Odyssey carbon doors, yeah. you know, it's not that common of a, of a thing. So we definitely have to do that custom. And uh, it's something I want to look to doing into the future, but it would be a one-off thing and it'd be probably very pricey and time consuming because we'd have to take these doors off or get some from a junkyard and send them to somebody. And then they would have to crazy. make them one off, but Rolling it would be cool. With like some raw carbon fiber doors on this thing. That'd be yeah, nuts. that would be sick. And then if we went that route, I'd just go ahead and send it. No more window regulars, <laughs> regulators or anything. Just go straight race Lex van and uh, go gap some fools in a minivan. But she's getting there. At least after we get all this stuff done and start getting her all put back together, she'll be a much better version than yeah. it was. Because she was very point. finicky. Yes. So Not finicky, temperamental. Yeah, One temperamental. One day the next, this thing would just have its own mind and run different. So... And in addition to all of the wiring being cleaned up on the van, going through everything, we were just talking about how we're gonna hopefully make it not so temperamental. Um, this is the biggest change we're making. We are also putting the minivan on a FT550 fuel tech, just like the MR2. So we got the fuel tech right here, and we have our engine harness that we will be mating to that uh, quick connector. And then we have the other part of the harness as well in here. But uh, yeah, having the fuel tech on the MR2 has, you know, completely made that car just work and do what we needed it to do. So we are putting one on the Rodacy as well, and we're gonna get this thing dialed in, and that will allow us to do the same things we did to the MR2, put wheel speed sensors on it, all that good stuff, sensor this thing out if we need to in the future, if we wanna make the van legit and competitive and put it in classes and stuff, which I think would be awesome. Who would not want to see the minivan go to like World Cup Finals or something? So who knows what could be in the realm of possibility, but we're putting a fuel tech on her. And uh, say, it all starts there. It all starts right here. Yep. So we were super pleased with how it did on the MR2. I was, obviously you guys saw how well the MR2 worked swinging right out the gate, popped off the 8.1 and then the 790, and it just worked so good, super, 
close with the guys at Fuel Tech now. We can go up over there, have them help us dyno the, dyno the van or whatever we need. So I'm really excited. Get the van on a Fuel Tech, and uh, I think she's going to be a ripper when we're all said and done here. Yes. So. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Still have a ways to go, but... Yeah, I was gonna say, man, I'm just I'm so impressed with how these things work. Like they're small, compact, come with the dash, they're affordable. It's like no brainer. Yeah, dude, they just they work so good. Yeah. So Van's getting one. It's it's the next to get a fuel tech. And the little, so everything going, in the fleet needs if they, one. If it keeps going good, <laughs> I mean I'll keep putting fuel techs on everything. They freaking work, dude. So little, little FT action on the on the go kart yeah, thing we'll over there, shopping the cart. Shopping go kart, dude. I what about the care. jet ski? A little FT450 action. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about all that. <laughs> Maybe. As you guys know, we've been fighting some alternator issues on the NSX. The alternator that is on there right now is still alive and kicking, but I'm scared to do any sort of rips on it because I think it will eventually stop working as well, just like the last three have now. And we just got another alternator in, and this one came from Wasp Performance. And they're convinced that this one should hold up for us in the NSX here. They got a pretty sick logo, sent some stickers and stuff. And uh, yeah, this came from the United Kingdom as well. It's basically the factory alternator housing, but they put all of their uh, innards inside of it. So this one should hopefully hold up. Has their logo on there, even says Boost Boys Civic on there, even though, you know, it's for the NSX. But they made us our own custom alternator to try out on the NSX here. I already went ahead and got the other one out. So we will be slapping the new one on and we'll be trying this out and hopefully she holds up and we have no more alternator issues. And then, you know, if we do, at least we can work with some of these guys and figure out a solution in the future. But like I said, they're convinced this one should hold up. So slap her on there, do some rips and see if she keeps charging. All right, the new alternator is installed and I'm getting ready to take this thing for a quick drive, give it a couple rips and make sure that this thing is still going to charge for us. I got the laptop in there to double check it. Something I noticed with the other alternators that we killed is they would die when I started from a lower mile an hour in like second gear and this thing could just rip through the RPM range really fast in the lower gears. If I started in like third or fourth gear and just kind of eased into it, they were fine. But I think just whack and limiter quick is part of the reason they weren't holding up. But hopefully this aftermarket one will hold up for us and uh, do the trick. So let's go ahead and go on a drive. So happy to have those cam gears fixed too. It's not sputtering or breaking up and it just drives so good again, just like when we picked it up. When this thing isn't breaking up and acting up, it drives really good. So, so happy that that's figured out. I also want to give a huge thanks to all you guys that bought the NSX posters. We sold out of all of the reflection style posters in 24 hours. I forgot to mention that a couple weeks ago. We still have some of the other style left. Uh, I'll throw a picture of it up right here. We have a couple of them left. They are signed and those are still on the website, but we sold out of the other ones completely. So thank you guys so much. We also have a big announcement coming soon that I'm pretty excited about that you guys will see here very soon. So made it back in the NSX, didn't get to do any hard pulls on this thing. I'm hoping the alternator issue is fixed and we don't have to worry about that anymore. I also just got a haircut. So um, we haven't been posting too much these last few days. I've been busy working on a somewhat secret project we have going on right over here that I'm very excited to show you guys. Um, but I've been busy with that and we're not gonna release videos on it just yet, but we're doing our best to get it knocked out and running. And yeah, so sorry we haven't been posting too much lately. I don't know why I have to keep apologizing, but every time we don't post for an extended period of time, you know, close to four or five days, almost a week, we start getting the comments rolling in. Where you guys at? We've been, we want videos. And trust me guys, I'd love to be posting as much as possible, if not every day, but I'm also trying to uh, work towards quality over quantity. And there are times when I do need to push videos out just to, you know, keep things rolling over here. And that's really kind of why I'm even posting this video. I'll just give you guys a quick update on the minivan and stuff. And uh, also, 
on the van. I am still looking for a rear diff. I appreciate you guys tagging me in ones for sale, but most people are looking to sell a complete all-wheel drive drivetrain like I have back here. Everyone's trying to sell the viscous with the drive shaft and the uh, rear diff over there. I am just looking for just the rear diff and I haven't found anyone that has one uh, by itself. So I am still looking for that as well. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Big updates coming up. Like I said, sorry, we haven't been posting too much, but we have stuff in the works. Radice's getting uh, all gone through and you guys will get to see this thing that I've been working on these last few days here very soon as well, hopefully. And uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed regardless and we'll see you in the next one.